All right. I mentioned a little bit about Christopher Reeve, and we'll get to that here on the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett and Can You Dig Sports? And why Superman had a big involvement with a sports movie, uh, a little just before he passed away in 2004, actually. We'll get into that in a minute. But I want to update you. On last week, I talked about the Ryder Cup and Brooks Kepka and Bryce DeChambeau putting away their rivalry to win. Well, get this. Not only did Team USA win back-to-back Ryder Cups on home soil, according to Kyle Boone, for the first time since 1979 and 1983, the Ryder Cup went to the United States. This was supposed to be last year, by the way, so it's the 2020 Ryder Cup. Went to the United States at a record of 19-9 to against Europe. The largest margin of victory in the modern history of the event. <clears throat> Third Ryder Cup for the win. Win for the Americans this century. They have some catching up to do as they're only three and seven. But coming into Sunday, they were 11 and five. 11 and five largest such advantage entering the session at the Ryder Cup. We saw a couple of the guys bringing some beer. That were thrown on them. I think that was Thomas. I could be wrong, but a couple of the guys having some beer that were thrown onto the course. And then, of course, uh, capped off with the hug of Kepka and DeShambo. So kudos to them for putting their rivalry, their bad blood away, winning for a USA. I'm going to wear my USA shirt today in honor of them. And as I truly believe, winners wear red on Sunday if you're Tiger Woods. But if you're American golfers, on this past Sunday, September 26th, winners wear red, white, and blue in honor of the Ryder Cup victory for the Americans. That was cool. That's cool to talk about. A winning thing. Also, shout out to my Irish Notre Dame on the field of Soldier Field. Taking out Wisconsin, a big win for the Fighting Irish. They're now 3-0, and and that's exciting. And it's kind of exciting to wear Fighting Irish gear again. Uh, I got a green jersey coming in hopefully soon. Number 7. Kind of a number that's tied on my birthday. I'll talk about that as we get closer in October. October 20th, by the way. I'm turning 30. It's crazy, but that's happening. So, the Irish win. The Yankees have been doing well this weekend against the Red Sox. Again, Stanton, another monster homer over the green monster Sunday night. Very cool to see. And so, some W's amidst the NFL drudgery that is New York Giants football and New York Jets football. I digress. Christopher Reeve. uh, uh, Why do I mention him? Well, he was Superman. But then he fell off a horse, as you may have known. And was paralyzed and was power chair. Wheelchair bound and power chair bound. And his spine was completely messed up. He had to have a trach. I I mean, spinal cord injury. And this was, by the way, he, he died at 52 of heart failure, which is just horrible. But he had a C3 spinal injury. And he died on October 10th, 2004. But you know, he was Superman. And he was a superhero to his son, Will, and his wife, Dana. And then Dana Reed, unfortunately, was, you know, died of 
lung cancer in 2006, but Christopher Reeve fell off his horse in 1995. But he still lived a life that was so memorable that on his birthday, this past Saturday, he would have been 69. Reeve was featured on Google. And that's just such a special moment for those who suffer from spinal injuries, spinal stenosis, any spinal issues. And some would say it ruined his life. But I think he made the best of that accident. I think he adapted the best he could. After being Superman, to in real life falling off a horse, he still adapted to be a Superman for his family, even while disabled. But he did something even cooler. Uh, he did something also pretty cool. I would say recovering from a falling off a horse is damn cool and damn perseverant for Superman. Because we know in Superman, his kryptonite didn't always get him down. It made him stronger in the end. And I think personally, his, his heart grew even more. And his gratitude for life grew way more too. But he had a project called Everyone's Hero. And by the way, if you want more information on the Christopher Reeve, Dana Reeve Foundation... I would totally recommend it. Go to ChristopherReeve.org. That's ChristopherReeve.org. Call him at 800-539-7309. But Christopher Reeve directed a movie called Everyone's Hero. And this 10-year-old bat boy for the Yankees I mean, can you imagine that dream that was I guess animated through this movie called Everyone's Hero. And he had to return the bat of Babe Ruth before the deciding game of the 1932 World Series. Called Yankee Irving was his name. And the film was directed before the death of Christopher Reeve, so he did get that credit of being the director. Started a great cast of Rob Reiner, William H. Macy, Brian and Dennehy, Raven Simone, Richard Kind, Mandy Patinkin, Whoopi Goldberg, Dana Reeve, the wife of of Christopher, and um, and it was the final film for Dana Reeve before her death in March of two thousand six. But he made this kids movie. About Babe Ruth's bat. About the Yankees. And his legacy in sports lives on through this movie. Everyone's hero. So in honor of in addition to being Superman, he tapped into his love of sports. Obviously. And the love of the Yankees. He is family even throughout the first pitch at Yankee Stadium in 2003-2004. And that's his sports um, tribute, you know, contribution as an actor. Now, if you want to know more about his sports career and his further involvement in sports, I mean, I think it's pretty athletic. I know he was on strings, but it's 
pretty athletic to fly around Manhattan, then swoop down and pick up Lois Lane and her have her fly with him. He used to throw things at the villain. I mean, he had this superhuman strength. I know it was on TV and movies, but to a kid growing up watching it, he had superhuman strength. And that's athletic to me. But according to the sportscall.com, Christopher Reeve played soccer, baseball, and hockey at Princeton Country Day School. Obviously, he was horseback riding too, and he was an equestrian. While filming Anna Karenina, he became interested in it and then began riding in public events. And in fact, unfortunately, his injury took place in Commonwealth Dressage and Combined Training Association finals in Virginia. Finished in fourth place. Reeve was riding this horse. And the horse sort of bucked him. He did buck him. Threw him off. And that's how in 95 that happened. But that happened at a competition for equestrian. Now we know dressage happens in the Olympics as well. This is This man competed in Olympic sports. Even though he was an Olympian. But his love of this began in 1985, so 10 years. In 89, he finally was riding in public events. And then at the Princeton Country Day School, the school has since named its Hockey Invitational Sportsmanship Award in his honor. So today, I'm going to say this to all the jockeys out there, to all the dressage, to all the equestrian. There's a famous picture painting, I should say, in the jockey's room at Belmont Park. And this famous painting is of God's hands on these jockeys. If that doesn't give you chills when you see it, I gotta see if I can find a picture of it. These horses love to run. Don't get me wrong. But they do have a, you know, a temper sometimes. I've seen idiots knock on the glass at Belmont Park to try and get the jockey's attention. And the idiot banging on the glass doesn't realize that horse is so sensitive, he's going to throw his rider off, his jockey off, if they don't watch it. That horse will hoof and buck and, you know... Soar in the air. And if the jockey can't hold on, that's even worse. So pray for the jockeys. Pray for the equestrians. Especially in honor of Christopher Reeve, who was honored on Google this past weekend. And the lasting impact he has, beyond being Superman, is... Being athletic is being superhuman, is having super strength, and is having a super heart. And as they say in Damn Yankees, you got to have heart. And that's what Christopher Reeve did have in his work as an actor and in his sports. And so this week, I pray for the family, for Will Reeve, really, the the son of Christopher and Dana, and the Reeve Foundation. And just know his impact in sports is there. Beyond being athletic as heck in those movies, he actually was an athlete. And I think that's uh, pretty cool in The Man of Steel. I'm Alex Garrett. Guess what? You're going to probably hear over the course of the show, 8 to 12 a.m., by the way, uh, you're going to probably hear my take on one Michael A. Smith. What did he say? 
about Ben Simmons coming to the Nets? Oh, man, this guy just wants to talk. And I get tired of the talking heads. And Leal, you're doing good. But Leal Stradamus, you're calling yourself that? Pretty risky. Pretty bold. I like it. But when your picks are wrong, I'm going to call you out on it. And you're a good dude, but I'm going to call you out on it. <laughs> I'm Alex Garrett, the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett. We will talk to you very, very soon. And I would love to have Zach Zay and Leal on my pod at some point. Let's make that happen, guys. For now, I'm Alex Garrett. Some more music, some more commercials, and we'll be back after these messages. Stay tuned to Can You Dig Sports all day long.